Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Pishpinder Kaur and today we are going to learn about anthocyanins. In this video, we are going to talk about the introduction, nomenclature, isolation and general method of structure elucidation of anthocyanins. Have we ever thought about that uh, the whatever the colors these uh, flowers have from where they have got their colors you can also imagine some uh, vegetables and fruits also like uh, blueberries brinjal beetroot all these colored uh, vegetables and the fruits and the flowers they are colored because of some of the compounds and yes these are compounds which are responsible for the coloration of these plant materials are the anthocyanins of course there are some other compounds which are responsible for their coloration but the major uh, credit goes to the anthocyanins now depending upon the ph the anthocyanins may impart different type of coloration to the plant material like red violet or blue which we will discuss in our later slides now talking about the functions of anthocyanins these act as the attractants of animals for pollination and seed dispersal they also protect the plant from the attack of insects they are very good free radical quenchers that's why anthocyanins are also known as very good antioxidants anthocyanins also inhibit lipoprotein oxidation and aggregation of platelets if you want to know more about the functions of anthocyanins you can uh, read the paper which i have cited uh, substituted with the hydroxyls methoxy or the sugar now the sugar may be glucose arabinose galactose ramonose any sugar may be present over here you must be wondering that why uh, these anthocyanins are colored in nature this is because of the presence of high degree of conjugation you can see lot of structures are a uh, lot of structures of anthocyanins are in uh, resonance with each other because of lot of conjugation now if we talk about the nomenclature of anthocyanins this is the basic structure of anthocyanins which is present in all of the compounds we can see here that we have three rings a b and c rings and we number them as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and for this b ring we it we number it as 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash 5 dash and 6 dash so we start the numbering from this oxygen atom you must be thinking that why we are not naming it as the a ring b ring and c ring actually when we will discuss about the biosynthesis of flavonoids then we will see that this a ring and this b ring these two rings comes from uh, different uh, pathways and this c ring is formed when these two rings are joined together so this c ring is formed later on but a and b rings are already present during the biosynthesis that's why we name them as the a ring b ring and this is the c ring and this is the structure of flavonoid chloride if we have different kind of substitution on uh, these anthocyanins uh, like we have uh, five hydroxyl groups in this compound then how we are going to number them number them as we have hydroxyls at the 3 5 7 3 dash and 4 dash positions and we will number them as the 3 3 dash 4 dash 5 7 pentahydroxy flavonoid chloride and instead of hydroxyl if we have methoxy at any of the positions then how we are going to number them as like we have uh, hydroxyls at 3 5 7 and 4 dash positions and we have two methoxyls at 3 dash and 5 dash five dash positions so we will number it as we will name it as 3 4 dash 5 7 tetrahydroxy 3 dash 5 dash dimethoxy flavonoid chloride so you can notice here that we are writing 
uh, as per the normal uh, IPEC nomenclature like hydroxy comes first alphabetically then methoxy because it starts from M that's why we are writing hydroxy first instead of methoxy so this was the nomenclature of enthocyanin now let us see that what is the effect of pH on enthocyanins why these enthocyanins have different type of coloration at different pH at pH 4 this cyanidin uh, this cyanin chloride is um, red in color when we add sodium acetate and then pH becomes nearly equal to the neutral the pH is 8 then it becomes violet in color you can see the change in the uh, position of double bonds and the conjugation is changed the position of double bond is changed the color is also changes now this is the n hydrobase now after some time on standing this compound converts into pseudo base which is the colorless compound and in case of basic ph like when ph is 12 the anthocyanin this cyanine, cyanine chloride uh, appears as blue in color so we if we add base in this compound cyanine chloride or we add base in anhydrobase then we get anhydrobase anion you can see the only difference over here is that this is the anion and this is the enol uh, this is enolate actually and this is enol compound only this is the difference and you can see that the color is here it is violet and it is blue in color and after some time on standing this anhydrobase anion converts into the chalcone which is yellow in color so we have seen that uh, at different ph like ph 4 8 and 12 uh, different types of colorations are produced by this anthocyanins Now about the isolation of anthocyanins. First we take the dried plant material like if we want to extract anthocyanins from uh, the petals of the flower. So we collect the petals, we dry them out in the shade and then we uh, make the powder and we extract that plant material with alcoholic HCl. Now why we are taking alcoholic HCl? Because this uh, anthocyanins are soluble in alcohol and also if we make somewhat acidic like uh, when anthocyanins are present in the plant actually they may be present as some other they may be present as uh, the salt of some other anions uh, so we want to make them as the chloride salt while extracting them now after the extraction with alcoholic HCl, we evaporate the alcohol, then we get the water extract. Then further for the isolation of anthocyanins from the water extract, we can apply the different types of, different types of chromatographic techniques and we can isolate uh, different types of anthocyanins. Now let us discuss about the general methods of structure determination of anthocyanins. The first step is the molecular formula which we can determine by the elemental analysis. And in the second step, the number of hydroxy groups are determined by the acetylation. More the number of acetylation, more the hydroxyls present in the structure. The number of methoxies are determined by by common method which is known as the Ziesel's method. In this method, we heat our compound with hydroiodic acid and then we get alcohol and uh, methyl iodide. When we treat this uh, methyl iodide with silver nitrate solution, we get precipitates of silver iodide. And now by, by uh, noting the amount of the silver iodide, formed in this reaction we can correlate with the number of uh, methoxys present in our molecule so that's uh, the way that Ziesel's method tell us about the number of uh, methoxy present in our compound 
Now in the fourth step, we degrade the cyanidins into different fragments and then we can deduce the, stru deduce the structure of the parent molecule. Like if we have only hydroxyls present in our molecule, we treat them with the concentrated potassium hydroxide solution. Then this C ring is cleaved over here and we get two fragments, fluoroglucinol and proto-catechoic acid. In fluoroglucinol, these two hydroxyls are the are those hydroxyls which were already present at 5 and 7 position and this hydroxyl is produced when the C ring was cleaved and in case of protocatechoic acid uh, this carboxylic group is uh, formed when the ring was uh, cleaved uh, from this uh, when this C ring was cleaved and these two hydroxyls are present as such which were present in the parent compound. So looking at these two structures, we can see uh, that uh, if we know that the C ring is cleaving and this hydroxy and this carboxylic will be produced by the cleavage of C ring, then we can say that these four hydroxyl groups like two over here and the two over here, these four hydroxyls were already present in the parent compound. So we can establish the position of these four hydroxyl groups in our parent molecule. Now if methoxy is present then what we are going to do is if we treat them with uh, concentrated potassium hydroxide solution then we again get the fluoroglucinol and the uh, protocatechic acid. In this case we can see that this methoxy was uh, also getting hydrolyzed to hydroxyl. So we are again getting the same products. We cannot distinguish that uh, whether in our parent compound methoxy was present or not. So instead of using the concentrated potassium hydroxide solution, we treat it with the barium hydroxide solution. In this case, we can see that this methoxy is getting intact in the product molecule also. So we are getting fluoroglucinol and the, uh, this compound where we can see the methoxy which is again present in this fragment. So from these two structures we can establish that in A ring uh, these two hydroxyls were present at 5 and 7 position and in B ring uh, this methoxy was uh, present at uh, 1, 2, 3, 3 dash position and this hydroxy was present at 4 dash position. So instead of using the concentrated KOH method, we will prefer uh, treating it with the barium hydroxide solution so that we can get the complete information about the presence of methoxy group in our parent molecule. Now our next step is, the, uh, is to establish the position of linkage of sugar. Now uh, for establishing, establishing the position of uh, sugar, First step is to protection of all the hydroxyls by converting them into the methoxy. Now in first step, these all hydroxyls like we have 1, 2 and 3. These three hydroxyls will be protected uh, by converting them into the methoxy. In the second step, what we do? We hydrolyze sugars with HCl. Now we treat it with HCl. These two sugars will be converted into hydroxyl then with the usual method of barium hydroxide solution which were which we discussed in our previous slide we cleave this molecule through this C ring and we will get these two fragments again this molecule and this molecule they are telling us that methoxy and 2 methoxy if we are getting methoxy and at any position um, in our fragments then we can see uh, then we can say that wherever the methoxy is present actually the hydroxyl was present in the starting molecule and wherever the hydroxy is getting generated there was the sugar molecule present in the molecule so from these two compounds we can establish that at this position now now uh, this was the seventh position in a ring okay now this seventh position was having hydroxy this five position was having sugar 
like we can see over here also 5 has sugar and 7 has hydroxyl and in B ring we are getting methoxy over here because uh, the hydroxyls were already present in the parent molecule so these two positions are appearing as methoxy over here and this carboxylic was generated when this C ring was cleaved so we can establish the position of 5 7 and the substitutions in the B ring now if we have both the uh, if we have uh, sugars at 5 and 7 position both or we have either at 5 position or at the 7 position uh, the unfortunate part is that we cannot distinguish between them because if we have sugar at 7 position then again we will get the same products so if we have sugars at either the 5 position or at the 7 position we cannot distinguish that in our molecule that whether the sugar was present at 5 or 7 position or in other words you can say that you cannot distinguish the presence of uh, sugar at C5 or C7 position but of course you can distinguish them with the C3 position if you have sugar at C3 position you can easily establish them with this method now if we have sugar at C3 position then what we do we treat it with hydrogen peroxide and acetic acid and we get this compound now the C ring is cleaved over here and this sugar is intact now if we want to hydrolyze this sugar it can be removed by ammonia but for the removal of these sugars these can only be removed by HCl so to establish uh, so we can see that this uh, C3 sugar can be differentiated from C5 and C7 position so this was all about the introduction nomenclature and uh, structure elucidation of for further readings on anthocyanins you can refer to these resources i hope you like this video in our uh, next video we will discuss about the biosynthesis of flavonoids and also we will discuss about uh, two of the anthocyanins uh, their complete structure elucidation and their synthesis till then goodbye